free child health care bill has been passed for the second reading by the House of Representatives. Some suspected separatists known as Ambazonian soldiers from the Republic of Cameroon have stormed Takum local government area of Taraba State. About 11 persons and a traditional ruler were killed. Some persons missing in the incident that occurred in the early hours of Wednesday at Mangang village. And as always, we will be reviewing the newspapers and off the guests, uh, of the press, I beg your pardon, with our guests this morning. Uh, we, of course, uh, will be looking at the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning. Good morning and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. It's uh, Plus TV Africa and I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Boko. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Thursday morning. We have a lot, uh, of course, uh, that we will be talking about today and uh, we hope that we have very, very interesting discussions, um, including, of course, a segment where we look through the papers and share with you some of the major stories making headlines across uh, Nigeria this morning. But before we, of course, get into that, as always, we start with uh, the trending stories. And uh, we're starting in Ondo State, where the PDP is accusing the uh, governor of the state, Rotimi Akiridulu, of mismanagement after he, of course, appointed his son, um, along with 13 other new appointees in Ondo State. I'll quickly share with you. Um, it says, uh, of course, uh, his son, Babajide Akiridolu, is uh, now the new Director General of the Performance and Project Implementation Monitoring Unit, PPIMU. Um, of course, this is according to a statement by Donald Ojogo, the Commissioner for Information and Orientation. The appointment of uh, Babajide comes alongside that of 14 commissioners and seven special advisors. And, uh, of course, this has created, you know, some controversy, uh, you know, with regards um, on those state. And, of course, if it is right that the governor's son be appointed into such a position, while it is not necessarily illegal, um, it also just doesn't look good. Um, you know, for governments. <laughs> you know, um, usually with cases like this, uh, the argument would tilt towards whether it's constitutional. I mean, does the constitution stipulate that um, you have a right or don't have a right uh, to appoint? So the constitution clearly has not stated that no one can appoint. But now it's a moral justice, it's a moral conversation. And, uh, you know, morality, some people will say it's still not law. And some people are saying everything is really wrong. How do you appoint your son, you know, to head government? Knowing that, I mean, knowing how we fare as a people um, with um, public office. And, mm. of course, has been accused that he used government resources, resources uh, from the state coffers to actually organize a wedding for the son. And at the end of the day, so it feels like, oh, yes, this is also another means of where you have your son occupying a, a government office, and then there's going to be mismanagement, you know, of state resources. Yeah, and of course, and who, who, who gets to checkmate the son, you know, if he, if he you know, mismanages that office? Um, does the father fire him? Does the father sack, you know, his son, Babajide, and say, oh, you know, I've noticed some inconsistency or some mismanagement with your unit, and so, you know, we're letting you go. That, that's not very likely going, you know, to happen. I mean, there, there's a lot. Some people are also asking, was he appointed on the basis of merit, uh, yeah. or was he just appointed because his father is the governor, and of course, he has, he can do and undo, that would be the word. Uh, was it on the basis of merit and all of that? But I'm thinking that, you know, we haven't gotten to that point, that's my opinion, where I would say I am the governor or I am the president and then my son uh, should be uh, heading one agency or minister in Paris that I'm thinking that we haven't gotten to I mean, it, that it, point. It, yeah, um, it, so, you know, it, it's it such doesn't a, sit well with, with a lot of people. And yeah. once again, you know, as long as, uh, even if, if it's not illegal, um, it just doesn't, you know, seem to be right, you know. And, you know, I've also seen the argument about, you know, whether he's qualified or not, you know, and if he's qualified, then yes, why not? Uh, what's wrong with the appointment, you know? But it's still just, you know, not the way that things should be done. Um, and, of course, you know, sadly, these are not appointments that people need to actually vie for. You know, you don't need to present certificates and pre present, you know, to show yourself worthy. These are simply appointments that the governor makes, you know, out of his own free will. Um, I've also, you know, thought about the uh, the perspective of, you know, a person would like people around him, people in his government, people in his cabinet, that he believes understand his vision and understand the, the you know the, the 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 picture that he wants to paint for the state or for the for the country. 
And so he, you know, will look for, for people who have similar thoughts um, or similar mindset around him. And so, you know, maybe that's why, you know, a son will step in because they both understand where they want to take Ondo State to and where they want to take, you know, that, you know, that, that uh, you know, particular uh, ministry to. But still, um, I'm sure that there's other people who would also understand your vision, um, um, Governor Kerry Dulu, <laughs> and would be able to also do the same thing that, you know, that has been done here. Because if you make this normal, you know, then every president who gets into power will simply make his wife minister of something or make his first son, you know, um, you know some you know, minister of, of, of what, anything random uh, simply because they can. And that's, you know, not what we want to see, you know, at this time in our country. But, you know, the politics of, uh, they call it prebendal politics and, you know, politics of a master and servant, the politics, elitist politics, where you have um, those who are elected, they're elected for a select few, and they're just there to represent their interests and the interests of their clansmen and mm -hmm. what have you. That has been very predominant in our political space. I mean, you see it every other time, whether it's via appointing uh, direct or blood relative to government offices or giving contracts, because you also see that, that sometimes you find those who occupy government offices giving awarding contracts, you know, to cronies, friends, and what have you. So that kind of politics is still very, I mean, it's something that's very dominant in our space. But I'm thinking that, um, because it breeds a lot of corruption, like you asked a question, uh, who will do the checks and the balance who would actually say you're, you're not doing this at what point yeah. and that's why I'm saying if you also look at our business it comes to a point where how many times have you seen you know business being owned by a Nigerian and then you have um, families run these businesses and that's because I think that we haven't gotten to a point where we can be you know we can separate sentiment and then stay professional so all of that um, like I said we're, we're, we're not really ready for that kind of stuff and so it brings us back to the conversation of whether it's legal and some people say okay there's no con the, the Constitution does not see anything about it yeah. and should the Constitution begin to spell out some of these issues or say okay we ought not to do this we should do this and all of that so that's also another know. case so I it, kind of it, feel it, it's a just dicey, mention, yeah you know it is not necessarily a ministry um, he's head of uh, project implementation unit, so you know. So probably, you know, like once, you know, like I said earlier, you know, if if a person wants the people around him that understand his vision and wants to ensure that the the uh, goals that he wants, you know, for the state are fully implemented, he probably would put people who have the same mindset as him in, you know, in office. You know, he wants them around him. But that's really not. But that's really a song. You know, I, I <laughs> yeah. get that. So I because yeah, I get I'm that. sure that there are thousand and one persons out who there who can do who, same, who can do same, who would yeah. also think alike. I'm yeah. saying, but. However, this is something that we're saying that there's a direct, I mean, um, appointment. You're having someone head or, you know, manage something and all of that. But it's the same thing. When you award contracts to your family members, uh, you award contracts to your friends, what have you? It's almost one and the same thing. Well, you know, before we move on, you know, just there's a particular state in the country where, you know, the... the <laughs> It's Why former, do I a, think you're about a, to be naughty? It's a former governor, you know, but, you know, the, the children of this governor, you know, still hold major stakes in the state, you know. Oh, one know. of them is in, in charge of the markets. The other one, uh, I, I would stop there. Ah, anyway, <laughs> moving on from um, Governor Rotem Yakiri and his uh, son, let's now move, of course, to social media, where um, yesterday morning started with a little bit of drama after a particular a man, a married man who's been married for a few years, two or three years, uh, was called out after messages of him going further than he should were leaked. Um, this is a man with the handle Chizom or Chisom, I guess that's how it's pronounced, who of course uh, was called out yesterday morning. Um, he, the, the background of the story is he has a tech company. A few weeks ago, and I remember that I saw this, a few weeks ago he reached out to Don Jazzy, the music executive, and asked for support so that he can um, sponsor you know, dozens of young people into learning tech. So Don Jazzy, I remember, um, supported him with 1.5 million. Um, and so, of course, it was now open for everybody to apply. You know, go to his DM, find out you know, if you, you, know, you can be among the people who are chosen to learn you know, tech. And so a lot of people did this, you know, both young, young boys and young girls, you know, on, on the same social media space. Um, but eventually, you know, these messages came out yesterday where um, this man, who of course has a lot of pictures of his, himself and his wife on his profile, um, then went ahead to start asking some of the people who applied for sex, you know, and asking that they meet in, you know, private you know, places, asking if it was a safe space, 
asking you if they've ever cheated, you know, and random things like that, you know, that you wouldn't expect from a person who should have simply business conversations with these people. Um, it started with one person, you know, who put out the messages where he asked her, you know, um, you know, if they can meet in a, you know, in a private place, you know, because of how risky it is, asked her if it was a safe space, you know, and, um, you know, invited her over, you know, she eventually didn't show up or she eventually didn't, uh, you know, uh, turn it down. He spoke about, um, uh, well, I wouldn't mention. Well, it spoke about hard drugs, you know, a little bit of that, you know, and talked about how that gets him sexually excited. excited. Um, that, I did. <laughs> well, <laughs> how that gets him sexually excited, and you know how you know he would like to get a and he know, hotel. You know, you and know he, yeah. he he sent all of that yeah. emojis. So laughing. you know, all these messages came out, and then eventually more people started to put out their own messages that they had received from the same person. Oh, so wow. it, it got to about six or seven young ladies who then put out the messages, private messages that they had received from the same person, you know, soliciting, you know, the same, you know, type of thing. So um, there was many arguments yesterday concerning, you know, what he really did wrong, you know, aside the fact that, yes, it is, if you're having conversations concerning tech and, you know, how you want to get people into your company, then you should have no business, you know, asking for sex or, um, or having conversations concerning sex with these people. Um, and at the same time, you're married, uh, Oga. You know, and, and that's what one of the messages I put on, on uh, social media yesterday was saying that how a woman would wake up in the morning and go to work, you know, maybe wake up, make breakfast, kiss her husband goodbye, have a good day, honey. And probably ensure that you he know, has his tie properly. Exactly. Yeah. Check his tie, make sure that his, you know, okay. his uh, breakfast is properly set, you know, and then goes to work, having a beautiful, you know, day at the office. And a couple of hours later, you know, her husband is being called out on social media for soliciting sex and for, you know, making these offers uh, to numerous young girls across social media. Must be entirely, completely embarrassing for a wife. Mm -hmm. And I could not imagine what she would have dealt with yesterday or she would have felt yesterday. Um, so, yeah, numerous angles to the whole conversation on where he got it wrong. And, and in like, you know, the street pundits would say she probably got hit by a stray bullet just sitting at her office or business premise. It is totally disgusting and very embarrassing that um, in the course of, you know, transacting. My point is you are an adult. Let's even say you want to even consent or that's what you want to do. What business you could, you know, there are thousand and one places you could go you know, get patronage and all of that. Why uh, engage this young people? Why even, because I saw the conversation after, you know, the next one, and then you're already talking about drugs. It's so unprofessional. And for, you know, for um, a platform like that or for such an opportunity, one would think that there should be, you know, we live in a, you know, a technology-driven, uh, uh, you know, world at this point in time. One would think that we probably have a website or something where some of these questions can be answered or, you know, uh, someone could be employed, you know, to answer all of this automated rather than have, you know, direct conversation with this person. It is really, really embarrassing and every other time. It just shows, you know, um, the value of individuals that we have in our society. And like we constantly say, our kids are no longer safe. I mean, the people that should put us right, because growing up, you find out that we're in society where uh, you would also, you have a, a man, an elderly man who would look out for another younger one and say, hey, you can't do this, you shouldn't do that. But it's, it's contrary to um, what we're seeing right now. So you rather have people who are encouraging, introducing and indulging our kids, our young children, who are, I mean, look at those young people who have actually, um, th they want to make something out of their lives and this is what's going on. And yeah. for those of them who might not understand, because this is how it starts. And before you know, um, somebody's been invited. These kids could probably be very naive or this young adult could be very naive and not understanding what will fall afterwards. Okay, come see me in a hotel room, when it, you know, in a space. And before you say, Jack, uh, there's a rape case. Yeah, and, 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 and rape cases are very difficult to yeah, prove. to prove. No evidence and all of that. So but I'm thinking that, you know, on the other hand, uh, family needs to do a lot. I mean, immediate extended family and every other person. Let's protect the kids on the other side. And nah. uh, I really, I, you know, I, I, I don't even know. I, I, I don't I, even know where to come from. Yeah, but I get all of that, you know, but I, I just think it's, you know, another day to remind men to do better. Um, you know, in every way. Okay. Because I remember there was one, even one of the messages he was asking uh, for a private session, um, you know, to, to learn tech, you know, and this is meant to be a field of form, apply, you know, if you get picked, you know, you, you, you know, join the group of people who eventually, you know, will get uh, this uh, tech training. 
um, and he was asking for private sessions. It's, it's really just another another day to say that men need to do better. A lot of Nigerian men need to do better. And the fact that you know um, in that space, and also because we, you know, and I, I think I mentioned this yesterday, how we need to give women more opportunities. But you cannot give women more opportunities in the space where there are pred uh, predator, uh, predators like this, you know, who will try to take advantage of their, you know, you know, the fact that they have, you know, that ambition that exactly. Um, and try to you know uh, you know put put sex on the table. Um, whether there's consent or no consent, it still makes it entirely wrong. So you can say, okay, yes, they're young adults. You know, they're old enough to consent or or, or to not. But it's still completely wrong and should never happen. Um, in a space where women are trying to be better for themselves and trying to get into that in, into the tech world or whichever world, um, those things should never be a part of the conversation. And you know, one would even think that he should know better and do better, especially a period where there's been a lot of uh, you know conversation surrounding. Uh, sex for all sorts, sex for grades and sex for uh, what have you. No, so one would think that, okay, he understands that um, there's so much awareness at this point in time and anything can happen that he should be careful. But it's just also a reminder that you still constantly have a lot of persons who put sex as a bait, you know, for those who actually want to aspire to whatever level, whatever it is, career-wise, you know, dreams, aspiration, and what have you. And that shouldn't be the case. Yeah. People should be, you know, uh, given opportunity based on, I mean, merit. Not that um, you begin to coerce them. And because, you know, some people would really want to get it. They don't mind doing yeah. what they have to do just to get so to where they want to, to get to. To be fair, to be fair, um, none of the messages that I saw really, were inter for me, didn't necessarily interpret as, have sex with me and I'll teach you tech. It, it was really a, okay, you want to learn tech, you know, and then next in the conversation turns into, you know, why can't we meet in a private residence? You know, you look very beautiful. I'm very attracted to you. Oh, God. But you know, <laughs> for, <laughs> let's not go there. But you, know, but, but you know that uh, the fact that it wasn't directly communicated I, doesn't absolutely. mean that that's no, what I just, I just, I said, that's, I just, that's yeah. why I said to be fair. You mm -hmm. know, I just wanted to clarify that aspect. Anyway, um, those are our top trending stories. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into Off the Press. What stories have made headlines across Nigeria this morning? We'll be sharing with you, and of course, our guests will be analyzing these stories. Stay with us.